Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F86F Sabre and we're doing an updated cockpit familiarization video. Let's split it into several sections. First, left console, where I'm circling with my mouse now. Then we've got flight instrument panel. Armament panel. Gun sight. Front bow and right console. Let's start with left console. Starting at the rear left wall, we've got circuit breakers for the various systems. You can read which system they relate to and we can pull them out to turn them off if we want. Next, we've got a rocket uh, intervalometer, I think it's called intervalometer, really interesting name. So, traditionally, what we're going to do is set that to manually to one. And then you'll that is therefore that is then the rocket that it will fire number one first if you fire a single rocket it will then automatically interval to two and so on uh, up to the maximum amount of rockets that we can fire if we want the windshield anti-icing we can have it on or off and now these are old 50 systems and they can overheat if they do overheat we'll have a warning there and we can test the warning light Next, this kind of panel that I'm circling here is regards to uh, atmosphere in the cockpit, a bit like your controls on a car cabin. So air into the cockpit, we can focus on the floor or defrost or both. Temperature of the air, we've got here and it's actually a several position switch. Next, we have a rheostat here. Again, uh, temperature control rheostat, whether you want the air cold or up to hot with the heater on. We've got pressure control. We've got selectable 2.75 PSI or 5 PSI cabin. And next, the selector, whether we're going to draw pressured air from the engine in the up position or if that fails for whatever reason and we don't want that, then we can just have ram air come in. Next is primary and alternative trims so we've got the rudder trim here and it's a momentary switch so left as uh, sorry right trim left trim left and right click and then neutral we've got an alternative backup whatever you want to call it switch for roll trim here this is an interesting switch we can go right click for right and then it's off in a neutral position left click for left and then if we want normal operation it is there mouse mouse scroll wheel and back same kind of thing alternative for pitch elevator trim here We've got left, or nose up, nose down, off, and normal. Put that back. Next is flight control switch, and I'm going to need to call RC in for this one. So that's your alternate flight control switch. So when your alternate is on, your alternate booster hydraulic system powers your flight controls. Normal is using your normal booster system to power high flight controls and reset resets the flight controls to normal if the normal system is operative. Next up on the wall here is the gun selector switch. No gun selected, upper gun selected, mid gun selected, lower gun selected, all gun selected, upper, mid and lower their re readiness status here with those lights there. Next throttle quadrant, obviously you've got your throttle stick there which is going to be bound to uh, your HOTAS. On that there is a push to talk mic there is an electrical sight caging switch here, which is momentarily going to lock the sight and it has other functions, but that's going to be explained properly in our weapons tutorial videos. Speed brakes, we can bind this to a HODAS or we can press in, out, or hold, slash neutral. Flaps lever, uh, flaps are up, flaps are hold or neutral, flaps are down. Out of interest, we've got a friction lever here. And that's not modelled in DCS. Let's move along. Next, a switch here that will jettison our bombs, rockets and tanks, commonly known as the Admiral's Doorbell. You can hit that in a panic if you need to get rid of essentially all of your stores. Next, it's a selective jettison for the tanks. So I should say tank selector first of all. So current selector here means that we're using only our internal fuel tanks. We can have a series of exterior mounted fuel tanks and we can select which one we want to drain from here. Also, if we wanted to drop a particular tank, we can select it and press that guy there to drop. And we've got a light here to show if our outboard tanks are empty, and we can test that light. Move up here to a small auxiliary panel. 
landing gear status indicators here are landing and taxi lights whether they are extended and on extended and off off and retracted we've got our pedo heat here which is simply on and off we've got a s audio silencer for the horn so if there is a, a horn blaring because of the landing gear status then we can silence that there. Up here we've got an interesting switch regards engine control. We can have extended a what can only be described as a FOD gate. Would you agree with that, RC? Yep. The engine protecting it. A retracted FOD gate. Mutually exclusive. But we have anti-icing for the engine. Next, oxygen monitoring and manipulation. Main pressure gauge and flow indicator here. The pressure is in hundreds of PSI. Whether we want mixed or 100% oxygen, my understanding is I believe 100% oxygen is useful during high stress dogfight, but I, I'm not sure of that. This little guy here is a funny one. We can test the mask, oxygen mask, by going like that. And then we've got emergency supply aft and forward. And pressure demand oxygen regulator here. We think that's basically a, a fancy way of saying the system is on or off and as far as we're aware it's always going to be on next we move on to the the flight instrument panel which is quite complex so first we've got for manual pipa bombing we've got these sheets here that we can flip over um, we've got full videos of how to use these and what they mean but just a rough description is that if we were to enter a dive at 305 knots IAS, uh, 10,000 feet above the target we start the dive, we're going to dive at 60 degrees, we'll release our bombs at 4,700 uh, AGL. Uh, that, that's roughly how that's going to work there. Uh, the mode of the actual PIPA itself, whether we're going to have normal or bomb fixed, again covered in the tutorials, please can watch that. Canopy control, whether open, closed or off. Emergency fuel selector, if we have primary fuel failure, we have the ability to use a emergency fuel system here, which is interesting. The next are uh, three lights to check the status or the failure status of inverters in the aircraft. It's quite complex here. So main instrument, three phase inverter failure, warning light, and we can test all of these. Bing, 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 bing. Uh, both instrument, main and alternate three phase inverter failure, warning, and radar main uh, single phase inverter. Next, we've got a indicator light to show that we are in neutral takeoff trim. Let me test that. Next, we've got a, a tri position gauge here. This is a hydraulic gauge here in thousands of PSI. And we can either show the status of the utility hydraulic line, the normal primary line, or the, whoops, or the alternative line. You see alternate's low at the moment. And if alternate's being used, this guy will blink. And I'm just going to see if I can show that for you now. This guy we looked at earlier. If I can find him. Put this guy into alternate on. Ping. And we have the light glowing. And the radar inverters also come on. And we reset that. Ping. Back to standard. And we're now back on main line. Warning light off. Over to the left. Uh, parking brake. Pull and lock. This one's an interesting one. Emergency gear up button for the ground use. Um, I don't see why you'd ever use that, but it's there. Landing gear up and down handle. Indicated Mach number speed here. And indicated air speed here in hundreds of knots. Indicated needle there. Maximum needle there. Maximum no speed warning there. Uh, no exceed speed, sorry. Maximum no exceed speed with gear and flaps down there. Got a vernier drum there for more detail. And I think that's it there. We've got, so we go down here, a radio compass. It's That's going to be our 12 o'clock position. The needle is going to point to our tuned in radio signal that we're going to use with the system that we'll look at in a bit. And we can adjust for local magnetic variation if we wanted to, like that. Next, pretty much standard barometric altimeter. We've actually got three needles here. We've got the uh, kind of 100s, 1000s, and we've actually got a 10,000 marker as well. We've got our, uh, our pressure in uh, inches mercury shown here, and we can change the pressure setting of the barometric altimeter with that knob there. Down on the left, current uh, voltmeter 
direct current of the system. Next, load meter. So this is showing the load in percent of the system in amps. And we have a failure for the generator as well there. We can test failure warning light. We've got a chronometer. We can set and adjust here. And we can stopwatch function there and reset. Up and right we have what may be described as a compass, but technically it's actually a directional gyro. It's going to be more stable than a compass. It is slave to a magnetic compass. We can use this guy here to fast slave. So say you've been doing some twists and turns and rolls, harsh maneuvers, you'll upset the gyro system here. What we can do is eliminate some of that error that's been occurred with this guy here to re-slave to magnetic. And we've got a turning knob here for correction, so we can rotate that to a pre-selected heading navigation. Next, we've got a, a gauge here, or twin gauge. We've got a your slip gauge here. So the idea is you want to keep your plane flying straight and level most of the time. We want to keep that ball there between the two lines. And we've got a turn indicator up here, left and right. Next, our artificial horizon, or our attitude indicator. We are in the middle, left wing, right wing tail. That line is showing the horizon, pitch in tens of degrees up and down, roll with this guy here, 30 degrees left, 60, 90 degrees left and right, and we can cage it if we need to. Pretty much standard VSI, vertical speed indicator, climbing and diving in thousands of feet per minute. Next we go up, our accelerometer, three needles, one showing historical high, historical low and indicated. Up to positive 10G with no exceed there, or no exceed recorded of there, so about 7G. No exceeded recorded there of about minus 2G. We've got no exceed with stores on of positive 5G. Next, labs. So this is the, this is the type of bombing method. We've got a full video on this, so I'm not going to try explaining it now. Please go and watch the video. We can cage or uncage the gyro, as you'll see. The labs start on or off, and this is going to be a changeover and... Again, please go and watch the video rather than me trying to explain it now. This is going to be our lab's indicator here for how you're going to do the dive, how you're going to do the climb. Next, engine fuel flow in pounds per hour times 1,000. Next, cabin pressure in equivalent thousands of feet up to 50,000 feet. Next, total fuel quantity times 100 pounds of fuel. Next, engine exhaust temperature in Celsius times 100. Next, engine tachometer, and it looks a bit weird, but that's zero up to 50%, 50% up to 100%, and up to 110% for the engine. I'll give it a rev so you can see what I mean. Next, engine oil pressure, typical regime up to about 20 psi, but we can show up to 100 psi. Next, warning lights for fire in front engine compartment, rear engine compartment, and a tester for both. Okay, down below the flight instruments and with the armament panel on the left here, an awkward carrier, uh, awkward character, sorry, uh, method of jettison. Emergency jettison handle, left mouse button release all, right mouse button release outboard only. This guy, non-functional, not sure why. This guy is a manual method of reverting to the secondary or the alternate hydraulic line. If the electrics don't work for some reason, you know we have the electric method, we've got a manual method here. Armament panel, um, wind correction for bombs here in knots. And then if we go all the way down, we're into uh, gun and rocket mode. Uh, speaking of rockets, for manual pipa depression in milliradians, we've got 10 milliradians, 20 milliradians, up to 50 milliradians, I think. Um, mode of use for the, the actual site, guns, rockets, or bombs. We've got to tell the site what we're planning to drop. And telling it what type of bombs we're going to drop, high drag, low drag, or TR. We haven't found out, but we think TR is going to be training bomb. Next, if we go down here, we've got uh, instrument, instrument power switch, uh, normal or alternate. And a warning light, we don't think this works. And this guy, we don't think this works. Canopy clutch release, so we have the ability to declutch the canopy and presumably roll it back by hand. 
we have um, emergency gear release handle here. Next, we go up to the top here, guns, uh, missile selector here, select missile, select guns, select sight, camera and radar, or off. A gun heater, it could be on, off, or the down momentary is not modelled, we don't know what it does. Rocket mode selector, we can have, it's quite hard to get to, but single rockets in collaboration with the counter that we saw earlier, earlier on. The middle is to safe and then automatic which is going to be keep your finger on it and fire multiple rockets. With regards jettison in the rockets, we can have safe or we can have jettison ready. If you do that and then press the weapon release button, then the rocket pods will drop off. Fusing for the rockets, no fuse, a delay for penetration or instant fuse. Bomb release method, manual release, press the button, the bomb drops. Automatic, press the button, hold it and the computer will tell you when to drop the bomb. Or the computer will decide when to drop the bomb, for instance labs. Bomb selector, whether we want to drop no bombs, uh, right bomb, left bomb, or both bombs, all bombs at the top. Awkward little four position switch. Bomb fusing, top, nose and tail, off or safe, and tail only for penetration. Uh, this guy here is the, the filament for the site that we're going to look at in a bit, primary or secondary. While we're down here, we've got some cockpit rear stats as well. We've got uh, the different panels, auxiliary panel. We've got console. And we've got, uh, whoops, instrument panels. Let's just turn them all on for fun. Let's go up to the sight. Gun sight and bow. We have symbology on here usually, and we can adjust the brightness of it there. As well, as we saw earlier, we've got uh, another way of caging the sight here. Mechanical, cage or uncage. You can see it doing things there. Up here, standard issue E2B magnetic compass. Wingspan selector for the sight optics here, uh, in feet of the target. We've got the bomb altimeter here, and again, rather than me trying to explain this, please go watch the bombing tutorials and I'll show exactly uh, how to use that. Next, our ranging here in hundreds of feet, 600 feet currently, can be slaved either to the radar ranging, you remember this has a forward facing radar or it can be used as a manual indicator remember that we can twist the throttle and we can range in hundreds of feet like that so radar or manual ranging red light here radar valid target radar lock there we can directly decide the radar antenna output wattage here so low power uh, I think the, the range of the radar I think it's the square root of the output wattage I think you guys will know better than me so we can have very low power, low range, high power, high range. Missile control panel, got the GAR-8 I think on this here. It's a very old missile, cannot be fired at above a certain G threshold. If that threshold is reached or exceeded, that light will come on and you won't be able to launch it. Missile selector, do we want to fire left and left, then right hand or right hand or salvo both. The sidewinder growl audio tone rio stat there safe launch will salvo both missiles unguided and on to right console so we've got emergency canopy jettison i suppose you call it get rid of the canopy these guys here generator on or off next the fuel density meter fuel density meter here and our quote for this is the best we can find the sender fuel sender in the fuel tank and measuring a volume but the gauge reads in pounds this is not normally normally corrected for fuel density the fuel density to meter switch lets you select uncompensated fuel gauge reading when desired so go figure that one out emergency ignition here i'm going to use this for an air start uh, and we will be making an air start tutorial about the use of that Next, we've got our engine master switch, which is obviously just going to be off and on. Next, battery starter switch up for battery function, off for off, and down for starter function. Next, uh, I guess you call this like a starter termination switch, so just stop the starter manually in case of malfunction. You stop the starter with that. Uh, not modelled. Next, we've got uh, just a compass light switch, turn on or off. Exterior lighting bright or dim. Position exterior lighting steady, off or flashing. 
This is something that we don't know, but it's not modelled. Next, ADF, automatic direction finding, radio compass navigation, master mode, off, compass, so we'll be guiding the compass, that's going to be our normal mode, antenna fine tuning, looping, and we don't even know what a cont is, but it's not modelled, we know that. Antenna and looping are almost certainly not modelled as well. We've got our signal strength meter there for finding the station. We've got looping left and right there of the antenna. Pretty sure that's not modelled in DCS. Stand to be corrected as ever. Uh, we've got our uh, uh, frequency selection here. Our frequency band selection here in kilohertz. Our volume because we will be receiving a Morse code identifier. Essentially we will we'll, we'll be recording sound. We've got our uh, just simple light scale off, bright, low or, or off. Uh, we've got a carrier wave or voice selection here. As far as we know, this does not make any difference in DCS. Obviously, for actually fine-tuning the thing, we've got this guy here to choose our frequency from within our selected band. Down a little bit, our UHF ultra-high frequency radio from about 225 to 400 megahertz. Uh, master mode, off, transmit and receive, transmit and receive, and receive guard only. Guard being 243 megahertz. ADF automatic direction finding for that radio. Pre-selected channels, frequencies, which are set in the mission editor. Here up to 18. And guard. And a master volume for the audio of the radio. Next, IFF. Now, none of this is modelled in DCS at yet as we understand it. But we've got here our master mode here. We've got other switches here that I'm not really going to try and pretend to understand but you can do stuff with them and the all-important self-destruct button ping self-destructed again not modeled if we were to head back we've got some more circuit breakers it's kind of hard to really hard to see them but put them out and you can see what they relate to there and that I believe is the F86 F mirror don't forget about the all-important glued on mirror that's it anything you think we've missed RC Nope, I hope that was covered at all. Thank you. I hope that was useful. See you later.